CataractCoach.com. How to manage a posterior capsule rupture. With vitreous in the anterior chamber, the goal is to clean it up and insert the IOL. So here's the patient having cataracts or a routine case. And let's watch what happens here. I'm watching for the first time with you. We sped the video up a little bit. Let's see if we can figure out when the capsule breaks. We already know that's going to happen. So let's see, removing this nuclear piece here. A little bit of chamber instability. You can see a little bit of bounce in the anterior chamber. Like there, see the iris moving? That's not good because that means you're more likely to nail that posterior capsule as it flops up. And let's see, take out the pieces. And can we see back? Oh, yeah, capsule already open for sure. See little tiny fragments going way back there? Little tiny lens fragments are going in the vitreous. The capsule for sure is open right now. There, look, you're entangled in vitreous right now. Right now. So you got to be cautious here. Here's where you want viscoelastic in that left hand. Yep, that's right. Get the viscoelastic here on the left hand and inject that. Try to keep the vitreous at bay. Keep the vitreous back. So injecting a dispersive agent here looks like. There you go. Good dispersive agent. And you could use a cohesive, but the problem with the cohesive is it'll come right out with the next little tiny bit of vacuum put in the eye. So now there's still a couple little pieces there. Looks like, oh, I like this idea. Try to just maybe flush them out. Yeah, you could inject from the opposite paracentesis and then just depress that main incision. You'll be able to get this thing burped out of the eye. There's that piece right at the incision. And that's an effective way of doing it too. Yes, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. So if you need to put some more viscoelastic in, feel free. Inject all you need. So here, just trying to manipulate that piece and get it uh, maybe broken up a little bit. And then once it's broken up, here's the injection of more dispersive agent. It looks like HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. So injecting that, and then just depress that incision there and just guide them out. There we go. Just a viscoelastic wave, just pushing those pieces out of the eye. Inject, inject, and get that pushed out. You can break that piece up a little, make sure it fits through the incision. And there we go. Now it's cleaned up. Now what are you going to do for the vitreous? You've got to do an antivitrectomy. Now, you can start off without putting in the triamcinolone. You can start off because you have viscoelastic, you want to aspirate. You can see some vitreous already now, some strands of it. You can do this now. I still, at some point, though, want to use triamcinolone to stain the vitreous. It'll help you do a more thorough job. And so, vitrectomy going in here, make sure you understand the difference in the settings. You also may need to augment the anesthesia. So you may need to give the patient more anesthesia, both systemic and local. You don't want to just do a whole vitrectomy on a topical only anesthesia. That may not be enough. And this procedure is going to run longer. We've sped this up. The vitrectomy here is 6x speed. So if you certainly run into tiny lens fragments like that, look, take them down with the vitrector. Make sure you know the difference in the settings. What's IA cut versus anterior vitrectomy? Well, you need to know the difference. Did I tell you we have a whole book set up on cataractcoach.com? Free book about learning cataract surgery, including antivitrectomy, and a whole series of lessons, a curriculum lesson. How are you not watching this? How are you not reading that book if you're a young doctor? So cleaning up the, vis- the, the vitreous that's there, viscoelastic is already out of the eye. Here's where I'd really want to stain it. But surgeons are going to put viscoelastic. If you're an experienced surgeon, you may not need to do much staining. But I think for me, it's helpful. Here, now removing the residual cortex, this is IA cut. So position one, irrigation, two, aspiration, three of the vitrectomy cutter. Or if you're afraid you're going to damage the capsule, you can even go to cortex removal mode, just IA mode in your machine using these two instruments, and that way it won't engage the vitrectomy cutter. And so you're going to clean this up. You can already see the patient's going to have some coronal edema, some decimate folds, all this extra manipulation. Now here comes the lens, a three-piece lens. It's going to place the haptics in the sulcus. Maybe we can get an optic capture as well. Remember when it goes in the eye, that leading haptic better come out like the number 7. 7L seven rule. First haptic number, number 7. Trailing haptic like the cap letter L. Get those haptics carefully placed in the sulcus. You need that good support. And then if you can, get an optic capture. Now, if you are doing an optic capture, what do you do with the Iowa power? Well, you can calculate it for in-the-bag placement because the optic's behind the anterior capsule. However, keep in mind your three-piece lens may have a different A constant than your single-piece lens. So in most cases, that means you're going to be dropping the eye wall power by about a half only because of the difference in A constant. If, however, you're placing the entire lens in the sulcus, including the optic in the sulcus, well, now you've got to use that rule of nines. That rule of nine is going to tell you, like, okay, we need to drop that IOL power because the optic is more anterior. 
the effective lens position in the sulcus is more anterior than if it was behind the anterior capsule. And you still have to take into account the difference in the A constant of the lenses. So again, here, with that vitrector, it's very helpful to remove any viscoelastic and any more prolapse vitreous. You may also want to bring the pupil down with a meiotic agent just to make sure there is no more residual vitreous strands there. And again, triamcinolum is helpful here. Remember, it also helps quell inflammation. Now, this patient, you got to watch extra careful in the post-op period. The patient may have more issues. Ah, there we go. Triamcinolum, beautifully done. And so you have no vitreous in the, in the anterior segment, nicely done with the triamcinolum. That's going to help quell inflammation as well. But even then, remember, your risk of end minus is higher in the patients with a, uh, uh, anterior vitrectomy and posterior capsule rupture. Also, your incidence of retinal issues is higher. CME is higher. So we've got to watch the patients a little more carefully in the post-op period. You notice here the surgeon now sealing up that second paracentesis. You notice how for the bimanual vitrectomy, a different incision was made. Don't use the main incision. I like it. Good, good job. Now, those are sealed up. For the main incision, you could probably just seal it up, but I probably want to put a 10 on nylon in just for, just for good measure. I don't want that AC to collapse the post op period. What if the patient touches the eye? I don't need any grief because if the AC does collapse, you will get vitreous prolapse because remember, there's no central posterior capsule anymore. So really nicely done in this case. This is going to happen to all of us. So you need to know how to do a good anti-vitrectomy and deal with posterior capsule rupture.